Hi, I'm Rob Cosman. Welcome to my shop and Merry Christmas. We are going to take these six pieces of U, Pacific U, and we're going to turn it into a beautiful wood hinge box, just like this English walnut one I recently made. Great Christmas gift. Stay with me. I'm Rob Cosman, and welcome to my shop. We make it our job to help you take your woodworking to the next level. If you're new to our channel, be sure to subscribe, turn on that notification bell, and don't forget to turn on the notification on your mobile device so you'll know every time we release a new video. Good? All right, back to the bench. I've done lots of videos on the various stages of making wood hinge boxes. One on cutting the dowel, gotta have the exact species. Uh, several on the actual building of the box. But I'm going to go through with these pieces already milled and I'm going to see if we can't do a quick run through and make a small U box. I and I'm just going to briefly show you how I process them after they've been milled and then we'll get right into cutting the joints and putting the whole thing together. Okay, I'm going to, uh, I'll give you the size of the box. And I, I don't, uh, I'm not making it for any specific purpose, so there's no, there's nothing critical about the dimensions. But I do like to keep the box relatively narrow only because I use a solid wood lid. And the wider the lid, the greater the risk of it cupping. Narrower, you have less movement to deal with seasonally and a little bit less chance of having a cup. Or if it does, it's not going to be nearly as noticeable. So the box is going to be somewhere handy to five inches in length. It is three inches in width. And the height on the end of, is going to be about an inch and seven eighths. I always like to have it so that the lid sits down in between the two ends and ends up being flush on the top. And if there's a secret to building boxes successfully, make sure those pieces are perfectly square. So when everything is assembled, things fit and there's a critical part that I'll share with you when we're putting it together so that you understand even better. So the first thing I want to do is get a straight edge. Then once I've got, actually I've got some material to remove there because I've got a bit of tear. Now I'll cut a little chamfer, flip that over. That little chamfer protects the wood fiber from breaking off the end. And do the same thing on this side. I'm just pulling the board out a little bit from the end. One more. Okay, so that'll be my standard. Make sure that it's already... Uh, actually, that's too close to the length of this one. I won't have enough to clean it up, so I'm going to take a little bit more off of this. That was the bottom of this one. You can see how the grain, the uh, rings are much tighter down here. So I'll make them both like that. So this will be the bottom of the opposite one. You know, I forgot to plane it first. Then cut my chamfer, flip it over. Want those pieces to be the exact same lengths. I'm going to use a piece of eighth inch Baltic birch in the bottom. I'm going to set the top, the dowel, and that over here. I don't need to worry about those right now. So I want to make sure that I'm always referencing off the same component so that I'm going to identify with just a simple B. 
the bottom of each piece. And you'll notice that the grain is, again, closer together on the bottom. So I did the same thing on these pieces. So it'll look somewhat similar when I go all the way around. Now, you can some saw marks. I don't need to worry about that. That's going to be on the outside. So before I go and start cutting the joint, I'm going to plane up the inside of each piece so it'll be finished. This is my thrown together jig for cutting these box joints. First thing I want to do is make sure that the large bit, this is a half inch cutter, is just above the height of the sides. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut these. I'll reference the bottom against this pin. to be sharp and I like these spiral cutters I think they do a better job you also want to make sure when you put your piece on that it is standing plumb so that those walls of these pins are square to the are parallel to the side or square to the end now we're gonna go on the other end where we have another router and this one we have to cut obviously the opposite pieces so the first thing I'm going to do is turn my cutter oh actually we should check and make sure that the height is right first. So that one wants to be just above the thickness of the ends. I want to have the cutters, the lips, running this way so they're parallel to the fence. I'm going to take one of these pieces and I'm going to put it in here and move it over so it's right up against the side of the cutter. And then I will clamp that in place. So my first pass, and I'm going to have reference to the bottom piece, my first pass, instead of being right here, is going to be about halfway. I find if you try to take the full cut right away, you'll end up with a that last little piece and it gets jammed in there and sometimes causes some grief. Make sure there's no debris. Cut all four. Now, just like we did with the last one, we'll just simply make a cut with that inside up against the pin, and then we'll just step over, do all of them. do this one we obviously don't want to have it coming out the end so I've got a line on here representing where the cutter is I'm going to put the outside of the box lid I put box side facing up the bottom is going to be facing against the fence and I'm going to drop that down somewhere in the middle of this tail and I'll go to the same spot on the other side
At this stage, it's important to do anything that's going to be easier while they're, before it's assembled. And also, I want to make, take care of any issues that may prevent the joint from going together the way I want it to. So I'm just going to run my chisel along that groove and clean up any burr. I'm not sure why that's doing that. Always best to keep both fingers behind the cutting edge. I should say all fingers. Okay. At this stage, I want to look and see which which piece I want in the front, which piece I want in the back. And they look so similar that it's really not going to matter. So I'm going to make this my front. You're reaching into the box. You don't want to reach over a sharp edge. So I'm going to do a couple of things. I'm going to first take a pass to clean up that top edge and get rid of any any saw marks. If you take a uniform pass, meaning material from one end to the other, then you won't throw that out of whack. And what I mean is you want to keep these edges parallel to one another. Now, in order to cut that chamfer, I'm going to hold it on about a 45. And that's just enough for comfort. So when you're reaching into the box, you're not reaching over a sharp edge. Now I'm going to want to do the same thing out here. And I'll show you that when we actually put the lid on. But it's much better to have, have two. Uh, the surface is closing with a chamfer on both and that just breaks a joint and allows for a little misalignment without making it stand out. Now, I went the wrong way, so I'm gonna hold it this way and cut that. And I'm gonna cut this one a little bit heavier because I know I'm gonna take material off when I assemble and I don't wanna lose my chamfer. Now, this one needs to have the uh, groove cut in it to house the, the uh, wood hinge, so I gotta get that set up. Hey, if you like this video, we have more. Our newsletter has subscriber-only content, monthly discount on tools, and anything we bring out that's new, subscribers get first crack at it. Click on the link below. Let's get back to work. What I've done is I've mounted a small um, trim router with a quarter-inch core box bit. That core box bit cuts a half round, so the diameter is a quarter of an inch. I've got it set so that the part sticking above the table is a little bit less than half of that diameter. And uh, you'll see when we actually do this why that's important. And I have the fence positioned so that when we're finished, more than half, if this is going to be our back, more than half of it is going to be inside the back. So the center is going to be right about here, well within the outside edge. Really important to maintain this little bit of wood that comes up around on the back side so that that will make the joint invisible. So I'm going to set it down like this and I'll do it in two or three passes. I don't try to do it all in one because it's really important to keep, like I said, that little point of wood. And if you try to force it in one cut, you may end up tearing that off just because of the extra debris. lost a little piece right there hopefully it's not going to make a difference this is also the reason why or this is the reason why you have to have enough outside of the uh, tail so that when you're making that pass you don't end up cutting into the tail which would then show out in the end so 
this part has to be far enough up to house all of that dowel. Now we've got to cut the other half of that groove in the lid, but we can't do that until we've assembled this and actually fit the lid to the opening. So we're, we're ready at this point to put this together. So we'll make sure there's no debris. And you want these to be tight enough that that thin cyanacrylate glue will actually wick its way into the joint. Now our bottom has to fit in there. Okay, because we cut that groove in between the pins, we can just slide that down in. Now we'll put this in place. And the real test is how it lines up on the other side. And if you have to do a lot of moving from one side to the other in order to get it to line up, then you're going to have problems with the with fit of the lid. Now I'm off. If you'll sight down there, I'm off about a 32nd of an inch. So that shouldn't, that shouldn't be a big deal. Want to make sure the shoulders are nice and tight because they really show. That's actually a little bit of a the corner missing. Okay, that looks good. Now we'll check it in our diagonals. So from corner to corner, that one is five and a strong three quarter. That one is five and a strong three quarter as well. So that's good. Okay. Now we'll glue that. Just along the joint lines, just enough to let that wick. And you should see it showing up down here so you know that it's going to give you a good secure joint. I'll just wait a second for that to absorb before I flip it over. Now sometimes I've had the problem of the uh, glue staining the end grain of the pins. Not always, but it has happened. If I have to, I'll come back and stain all of the end grain get the glue everywhere and it won't be an issue, but I've got enough to sand off there that I think it'll be all right. Okay, that doesn't take long to set up. I want the uh, hinge to disappear, so I don't want to put that sapwood back there, that'll show up. So this is gonna be the back side. So I'll just put a B on there. And because I know that the side I've already planed is gonna be the inside, I know which way this is gonna be oriented. So first thing we want to do is get a nice straight edge to work off of. And make sure we got the width and we do. Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna square this end up to that. I don't know if that's gonna be the case, but what I have to do first is get this edge straight and finished and then get this opposite edge so that it fits down in there. And yeah, I'm working under the assumption that this edge and this edge are parallel. So it, on the chance that it's square, it's just going to make it a lot easier if I work off a straightened edge. So the first thing we'll do is cut a little chamfer to protect that from blowing out. One more pass. Okay. Now we're going to cut to mark that. But we're only going to mark it till it's close. We'll actually do the finishing on the shooting board but there's no sense in trying to plane off all of that excess. And when I do this, I try to keep, keep it up high here so that you're getting a more accurate reading. If you put it down like that, then you can see that gap. Well, you're off by that amount. So bring it up here. So you're just catching that lid. Then come over to this side. Now I know that I wanna keep my line. So I'll go over to the table saw and I'll reference off of this edge and I'll 
cut, make that cut, leaving my pen, pen line, pencil line on there so that I can then come and shoot it to fit. This is the part that you want to be really careful. If you lose this fit, then it just yeah, may as well start over. So I'm just going to take a very small amount off and check it on every after every single pass. I put an extra piece of wood in here just to get into a, a sharper part of my blade. I just noticed a little bit of a nick in the bottom. Cut a little chamfer there, flip that over. Okay, so that sits in there just perfectly. There's no gap on either side. Can't wiggle it side to side, so it just has room. You can hear it. That's exactly the way we want it. Now the next move <clears throat> with it in place like this is to get it flush with the back side. But before I do that, I'm going to go and flush these up so that I'm working with a nice clean finished edge or surface in case I have to take off a little more than I expect. So I may as well do all four. I'm gonna do them over at the belt sander. Okay, so now that this is flush, we'll set that back in. And what we wanna do is flush up this back with this back. So I'll line that up. Okay, so it's, it's, this is a little bit proud over here, so I've got to take some off of there. But I've got some extra material over here, and I don't know if you heard it, but when I was shooting the edge, I accidentally split that out. So just as well, I can get rid of that now. Okay, they're both flush, good. All right, now, well, I was gonna say I wanna keep as much of that sapwood as possible, but I see I've got a, a big chunk out right there, so I really can't save any more than that. But I, when I flush that off, I'll still have that little bit of white. So now we're gonna run this over the core box bit and do the same thing we did here, only instead of sanding it up there, we're gonna sit it down like that. The back goes against the fence, and the inside goes against the table. Very light pressure, so it's not taking it all at once. Now, I never finish the inside of the box, but I always want to finish the inside of the lid, the edges and the inside of the lid, so that when it's finished all the way around, it'll help stabilize it and prevent it from cupping. So I've got to spray that, and I have to do something with the uh, place where the hinge goes before I spray it, so as not to impact the area that's going to be glued. So I'll just put a, take a piece of masking tape and then force it down in. Okay, well that's drying. <clears throat> we can go in and decide and cut and um, drill our dowel. So I always want to have an even number of pieces on the dowel. That way it just balances better. In this case, I have four pieces attached to the bottom and three pieces attached to the top. So if you had finished like that, it would just look, wouldn't show very well. You've got this one moving with the bottom and this one, or top and this one moving with the bottom. So I just think it looks better that way. 
So on something this size, I think I'll do a five piece. That'll give me three pieces on the bottom, two on the top. Now I'm using my little, my small uh, joinery crosscut saw, which simply means it's only going to consume 24 thousandths of an inch. The reason that's important, when I put these pieces all back together, I want as little interruption as possible on that joint line. If I used a table saw and was taking out an eighth of an inch, then it would be more noticeable. But this, I can pretty much get by with having it completely hidden. Didn't really matter on this one because I used two different dowels. But on this one, where I'm going to try to conceal it completely, if it's one nice continuous uh, flow of grain, it should work out perfectly. So I'm going to come over here and I'm going to label, I'm going to put a little tick uh, just under the uh, 13 16 mark. But before I do that, I need to have a draw line, an alignment line on here. And the next thing to do is to look at this. Now, if I put this if I position this dowel like that, that's really going to stand out. But if I position it so that it's like this, and the lines are straighter, that should really hide it well. So I'm going to purposely put my line along this side. If I can get this pen to mark. Okay, so... The line is facing me. And I'm going to put a mark, a number one, on either side of the saw cut. So when I put them back together, and to make it a little bit less confusing, I'll put these back in place. Now the hinge works based on the precision of the drilling of the dowels. We're going to put a 16th inch diameter hole and we're going to go in about an eighth of an inch into the end of each piece. And it's got to be dead center. So this is my jig. <clears throat> I made this, developed this, oh, 35 years ago. And it simply has a 16th inch drill bit in there that as I push it down in here, it'll engage and drill a hole. And come out perfectly centered. I'm using 16th inch welding rod and I'm going to put a piece into the each the center or into the end of each of the center two pieces of dowel go right to the bottom and then snip that off right about there and I'll do that on the same I'll do the same thing on this other piece. I, I didn't like the way the dowel had turned out, so I went ahead, turned, uh, made a new dowel, cut them, put them back together, got a red pen on there this time, and I'm much happier with this. They're lining up nicely. The rigid last dowel was actually slightly oversized by just a few thou, but it made a difference when trying to cut or drill the holes. So my next move is to m measure this big piece so I know exactly where to cut it. And when you do this, you want to put the dowel not down in there, but just on the edge, so to get as accurate a measurement as possible. And then I'm pushing everything this way to tighten up all those joints. And very carefully, it's probably a safer way to do this, take my chisel, laying it on the inside of this piece, and I'm just going to make a little mark with as much control as possible on the side of that dowel. Now I'll take a pencil 
and identify it so when I go over to cut it I'll be able to find it. Now this one has to be right on because it's extremely difficult to come in after the fact and try to take a little more off. So this kerf has a left side and a right side. I'm going to line up that little mark I just made so it's perfectly in line with the left side of the kerf. And I can come in here with my saw. Make the cut. And come back and check it and see how it fits. Okay, now I had to I had to bow that out a little bit to get it to fit in, but that's okay because it pulls the joints nice and tight. Now while I have it in here, I'm going to make a mark representing the joint lines. I'll take this out. Now, when I do this, as I mentioned, I like to keep the majority, the, the larger number of pieces glued to the bottom. And in this case, there'll be three, one on either end, one in the middle. These two pieces will be glued to the top. So that means when I glue this in, I want glue here, none there, glue here, none there, glue there. So I'm going to put a W where I'm going to apply wax. But just before I do that, I'm going to grab some tape, and this makes it a lot easier to distribute that wax. And uh, this is expensive wax, but I like it because it's, uh, it's soft enough. It makes it a little bit easier to use. And I need a, uh, a Q-tip, and I like to use these. They're called precision points. I'll take piece of tape and put it on either side of the glue area. I'm just going to use that eraser to Glue that in a little better, or uh, make it stick, I should say. Now, a little bit of wax. Doesn't need to take a lot, just enough to uh, make it so the glue won't stick. I've made a lot of these boxes, well over a thousand, maybe even close to two thousand. And I've never I've never lost one because the glue stuck both pieces. So it takes only a few seconds to do this. But it guarantees that that problem will never happen. Now we're gonna put marks in the same spot on the lid, making sure we have that position exactly the way we want. Now on this one, we're going to glue here, pardon me, we're going to wax where the X's are. Now this last step before we glue the lid on is optional, but you may want to do it. And I cut that little recess right there just so that when you pick up the box, it's very evident how you open it. Sometimes I leave it off, fool people, and they don't know how to open it. So what I'm going to do is um, clamp this in place and get this dog up. I haven't uh, finished those sides yet, so I'm not worrying about marking it. Just hold it in place. I'm going to find my center. 
two inches. Now I've got a little drum sander. I've got a coarser grit and I've got some fine grit wrapped around it just so that uh, I don't have to use both. I think I can get it with this one. It seems to be soft enough. Now, depending on the angle that you hold your uh, drill at, you can have different shapes, so you can experiment with that, but I want to keep it centered. Oh, my paper's slipping off. Well, I think what I'll do is actually peel that off. This is just self-adhesive. It's going to take too long with that fine a paper. This is, I think this is 120 grit. Might be a little coarser. And I try to keep that commensurate with the size of the box. Now, gluing this on, I gotta be careful not to put too much glue. You've gotta do both pieces at the same time. So I'm going to glue in the appropriate spots. If you need to, go in and put a G, just so that you don't mess that up. And that's where the glue will go. Set the bottom one in first, drop that down, make sure it's positioned properly. I'm gonna put a block underneath that. And on a large box, I'll often go in and put another block on to spread the disperse of the pressure a little bit better. But on these small ones, I like to use these, I call them light duty clamps, and I can put one right over top of each section. Okay, I use tight bond three, and I don't think it really matters in terms of open time, because I can't honestly tell you that it gives you any more than any other glue would. How's this for suggestion? Enough, but not too much. I prefer not to force that, that uh, wax to do its job. So better that I don't have any spillover. Now you do want to make sure you've got glue on that outside lip so that when your dowel glues to that section, it forms a good glue joint and appears seamless. Now I like to do the bottom one first because then I can at least get that one in place. I want that, those straight grain lines to be on the outside. And then force that down in, make sure it seats properly. And then we'll quickly glue the top ones. Again, making sure that we get lots of glue or sufficient glue out on the outside lip. that in place, put our piece on the bottom. And then you don't want to apply too much pressure, but I want to make sure I at least see squeeze out. And I think I can only get two clamps in on this. So we got squeeze out all the way along. So we'll give that 25 minutes or so, and then we'll flush that off and see how we did. Okay, this has been in the clamps for about 25 minutes. Now I'm gonna flush that off. Uh, I was gonna use the table saw, but I might just use the plane. So first thing I wanna do is flush off the, the dowel. I'm going to use my block plane and my little block plane shooting board. Now, I want to be careful not to cut into the back of the box. So once I get that close, I'll pull that in. 
in some more. Make sure my blade's not protruding off to one side or the other. Now I also want to make sure that my throat is down tight to prevent any or minimize any tear out. No, I got to do this one first. far. Now I'm going to sand most of this, but I just want to get rid of the bulk of the material with a plane. Just want to check that and see if I'm tearing. Okay, and I'm going to go over to the sander and I'm going to do the rest of that on the sander, but I'll just actually I'll, I'll wait and I'm going to cut a little chamfer on the inside. We'll check to make sure that it's going to work. So it does. Pieces are stuck where they're supposed to be stuck. So I have yet to put a finish on there, but that, that uh, will be done next. That's a nice little U box. I like that little stripe of white. The hinge works well. And I like the positioning of it, meaning you can't, if you, you can't see down back behind, or it doesn't create a gap when you open the lid. So that's, that's exactly where I would want it. So there you go, Pacific U. If you like my work and enjoy my style of teaching, click on any one of these videos and help take your woodworking to the next level. I've always said, better tools make the job so much easier. If you click on the link below, the chisel and plane icon, it'll take you to our site and introduce you to all the tools that we actually manufacture right here in our shop. It'll also give you information on our online and in-person workshops.